The fascination surrounding the reality television show The Curse of Oak Island has continued over the years, as viewers loved the idea of looking for a legendary treasure supposedly buried since the late 1700s. People also believed that it was cursed, which added more intrigue and attracted not only treasure hunters, but also those who loved tales. Some believed that there's an unbelievable amount of gold from a Spanish galleon or historical artifacts that were left by the Knights Templar. Some thought that the loot of the 17th century Scottish pirate Captain Kidd was secretly stashed there, all highly unlikely given the time span. Whether the tales were true or fabricated, the TV show became a platform for people to learn more about history as the stars of each season of the show struggled to unravel the mystery of Oak Island. In relatively recent times, the story surfaced when the Lagina brothers, Marty and Rick, came across an old article about Oak Island in Nova Scotia, Canada, from a 1965 edition of Reader's Digest. Initially, it was the older brother Rick who, when 11 years old, became absorbed in the story about booby traps and wood timbers found in the money pit. He told the tale to his younger brother Marty, who came to share his fascination for the island. Later on, their father showed them front page articles about the said Oak Island from the Wall Street Journal and it fueled the fire that started to consume the Lagina brothers' growing interest. It was just like the adventure they both read in the favorite Hardy Boy series. Over the years, the subject would come up again during family holiday celebrations and their fascination endured through the years and even into their 40s. They dreamed of searching for the buried treasure. When Marty was in Florida, he read from the back of a magazine that there were islands for sale and that Oak Island was among them. He called Rick about it and they had a meeting with the agent. But unfortunately, the island wasn't for sale, being just a misunderstanding. However, they weren't discouraged and searched for its owners, David Tobias and Dan Blankenship. David had had enough of treasure hunting and sold his share. However, as per the agreement between Dan and David, Dan had the right to approve or reject any sale. Fortunately, it wasn't the first time Dan met the Lagina brothers. There was a time when they went to the island to talk to Dan about becoming investors. They saw him clearing out bushes alone, and before they were even formally introduced, the brothers found themselves helping Dan with the task. Their good deed saw them invited to Dan's house, where they met his family. However, before they could even broach the subject of investing in the treasure hunt, Dan left. It wasn't a snub, as Rick recalled. It was more of Dan having so much work to do, and so leaving in a hurry. The brothers weren't the only ones interested in the other half of the island. A Swiss developer was bidding for it with a much higher price. But since Dan met the brothers earlier and saw that they were also devoted treasure hunters, he accepted their proposal. So Rick and Marty became the new owners of half of the island. They had a difficult time acquiring a permit to legally dig on the island, or what they called treasure rights from the Canadian government. They were only able to get it in 2012 when the Canadian government abolished the Treasure Trove Act and replaced it with the Oak Island Act. Now they could dig on the island, but needed to adhere to the splitting terms in which they got to keep 90% of any treasure, with the government having the remaining 10%, except for artifacts. Through their interest in Oak Island, the TV production company Prometheus Entertainment approached them to do a reality TV show about their treasure hunt. All the owners agreed, and the first episode premiered on the 5th of January 2014. The main cast of the show was the Lagina brothers along with Dan, and his son, Dave Blankenship, supported by Craig Tester, Dave Hensky, Charles Barkhouse, and Peter Fornetti. Over the years, they were joined by other family members and experts who were also passionate about hunting for the supposed buried treasure. The TV show's title, The Curse of Oak Island, was decided by the creators to not only attract interest, but also because the legend said seven people must first die for the treasure to reveal itself. Apparently, there had already been six deaths and during the first episode of the show, it was implied that someone from the present cast might be next. For several decades, many theories surfaced on what was buried on Oak Island. Each season of the show, viewers got to learn about the historical significance of all the theories that were thrown into discussion. It was only fitting to have the show The Curse of Oak Island aired over cable TV's History Channel. And as Rick and Marty took steps closer to solving whatever mystery surrounded it, fans were treated to more interesting ways of learning important historical events. In the late 18th century, a man-made hole, later nicknamed the Money Pit, was discovered by 16-year-old Daniel McGuinness and his two friends. While going around the 140-acre wooded oak island, somewhere on the Atlantic coast of Nova Scotia, 
It piqued the imagination of the three teens. As they started to dig into the hole, and every 10 feet, 3 meters, they found oak log floors and continued to dig until they could no longer go deeper and gave up the search. When the discovery became public, it initiated a treasure hunt that attracted many people from several countries for more than 200 years. Another group, the Onslow Company, started digging in 1802 and found items such as charcoal, a stone slab with embedded symbols, and coconut fiber that encouraged them to dig some more until they reached 100 feet, 30 meters, when water started to fill the pit and flooded it to a depth of around 60 feet, close to 20 meters. They couldn't understand where the water came from, so they gave up the excavation. This was the legendary tale that Rick and Marty Lagina learned about that led them to start their own journey as treasure hunters in the TV show The Curse of Oak Island. Over the years, the money that's been thrown into the excavation of the money pit amounts to millions of dollars and even caught the interest of famous people, including former U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt. When he was a 27-year-old law clerk, he joined his former schoolmates in the old gold salvage and wrecking company expedition, and they excavated the money pit, hoping to get their hands on the treasure. In the fourth season of the show, FDR's fascination with the Oak Island treasure was discussed. The former president grew up hearing stories about it and believed that the lost treasure of Louis XVIII and Mary Antoinette was buried there by one of her trusted ladies-in-waiting, who left for Canada. The lady would later claim that it was buried at the Mahoney Bay, Nova Scotia. However, the group's search wasn't successful, and FDR returned to the U.S. to focus on his public service. It was reported that even during his second term as president, he was still very much interested in Oak Island and received updates on the results of new expeditions. One of the names that was consistently associated with Oak Island was that of the Knights Templar. There had been many stories associated about them, which added more mystery to the supposed buried treasure. In the medieval era, a large association of devout Christians known as the Knights Templar undertook several missions, including providing security to Europeans who traveled to the Holy Land. At that time, it was difficult not to be killed or robbed when passing the Muslim-controlled areas without the protection of the Knights Templar. They even carried out military operations and seemed to be well-funded. Initially, they were chastised by some religious leaders. But then in 1129, prominent French abbot Bernard of Clairvaux gave his full support to this secretive group. Moreover, in 1139, Pope Innocent II released a papal bull that gave the Knights Templar special privileges so that they could fully act on their holy missions they were under no other authority except that of the Pope and were exempt from paying taxes, which made the group considerably wealthier. It was justified by each member swearing an oath of obedience, chastity, and poverty. The last one somewhat doubtful. No member could swear, drink, or gamble. But their numbers grew as years passed, and they established several chapters in Western Europe. Some historians believed that the lost treasure of the organization, including Christian relics, such as the Holy Grail and the Ark of the Covenant, were buried in the money pit. In the third season of the TV show, the treasure hunting team visited the town of Uberton, which showed them the Overstone Stone. It was a huge carved boulder that was used to commemorate the relationship between the Mi'kmaq local tribe and the Europeans. Some of the stone carvings had the cross symbol of the Templars, whom local historians believed arrived from Portugal. These markings led to the theory of the huge possibility that they hid their treasure on Oak Island. When the group was disbanded and most of the known members tortured and killed, over the next few years, there were many interested parties trying to get a hold of the Templars' amassed wealth. Oak Island was believed to have become a stopover during the early centuries for many explorers and travelers, and when human bones of European origin were found on the island, it gave more credibility to this popular theory. In the sixth TV season, the team found a lead Templar cross along with Templar coins and had it examined by experts. The lead material wasn't from North America, but had European origins, particularly from southern France. There's a little town there that was directly connected to the Knights Templar, and the Grand Master of the current chapter of the organization there believed that some of the precious artifacts were buried on the island. In the fourth season of The Curse of Oak Island, the team went to South Shore Genealogy Center in Lunenburg to look at some old maps of the island to give them some clue. They found it interesting that in one part of the island, it was listed as kid's treasure, which meant that even back then, cartographers already thought that the pirate's treasure was buried in the island. When the money pit was first discovered to have been flooded after digging to 100 feet, or about 30 meters, it was believed that it was booby-trapped by a pirate. One of the theories shown during the first season of the TV show 
was that the notorious Captain Kidd buried his looted treasure in Oak Island. It was said that the early settlers on the island shared that there was a sailor on his deathbed who claimed to be a crew member of Captain Kidd's ship, who told him that there was two million pounds buried on the island, presumably gold. Apparently, the 17th century Scottish pirate captain couldn't carry his loot wherever he went, and so he hid it on the wooded island. When Captain Kidd was later captured, he told the authorities that he was willing to give up his loot in exchange for his life. He later claimed that he had buried it in a secluded island somewhere east of Boston. But the authorities didn't want him back on the seas anymore, so they just hanged him. The team became excited about the findings since back in 1802, when a stone slab carved with strange symbols was discovered by the Oslo Company after reaching 90 feet. It was recently decoded, and experts translated it to 40 feet below. Two million are buried. The sixth season discussed a fascinating theory that viewers undoubtedly found engrossing. The Curse of Oak Island team met an author named Alan Butler in Scotland to fully understand the connection of Enoch from the Old Testament to the island. In past centuries, most of the people investigating the Money Pit were known members of the Freemasons. If the Knights Templar theory was right, then they were just following Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah. The Freemasons owned an old series of documents called the Legend of Enoch about how Enoch built a chamber to ensure a place where they could store all the treasure and information before the Great Flood destroyed everything. Some people believe that the underground chamber could also be found in Oak Island, as similar to what Enoch did in ancient time. The Knights Templar dug the money pit to store their priceless religious artifacts. It was another theory that the team would follow through in future seasons. While Rick and Marty started this journey as treasure hunters, they came to a point that they were now committed to understanding what really took place 200 or more years ago. Even the producers of the show and their partners were rooting for them to make a discovery as a sort of closure. They all wanted to know who excavated the money pit and why. Most of the experts who have worked with them believe that the team was getting closer to finding the truth. The Lagina brothers knew that it's now their responsibility as to how people would regard Oak Island and hoped that they could soon solve the mystery surrounding it. The TV show is now on its eighth season and just when they discovered that there was a huge sign of silver in the money pit, winter hit on Oak Island. So activities are in abeyance for several months. Can you hold your breath that long? Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.